Uh, I'd like to introduce Renata Fruchter to you. Uh, Renata is the founding director of the PBL Lab and lecturer in the Department of Civil Environmental Engineering and senior research engineer, uh, the thrust leader of collaboration technologies at the Center for Integrated Facilities Engineering. In the class that she teaches, she has students around the world that are working together on projects that have timelines, deadlines. They come from a variety of different disciplines. So in addition to solving the uh, challenge uh, that's posed by the class, they also need to solve the challenge of the interpersonal challenges of working with each other and the challenges across the time zones that they are working. And um, you, it is often said that, um, that the necessity is the mother of invention. This, uh, these global classrooms have proven a wonderful test bed uh, for some of the studies that she has done incorporating how immersive environments can help students to share and imagine with each other and to feel the presence of each other as they're working. Renata? Thank you, Marta, for having me here. It's always a pleasure to come and meet you all. So immersive workspaces will become an integral part of the next generation collaboration ecosystem. And this is actually already happening as we speak. They will offer really new paradigms to co-create, to experience future products. This will really transform the way we teach, learn, and work today. So as a point of departure, I actually want to offer you uh, our key objectives as metrics. And please check every story I will share with you and see which one is responded to. Reduce rework, reduce coordination overhead, reduce response latency in cross-disciplinary geographically distributed project teams, no matter what your product is. Increase engagement, team identity, agility, and collaboration. So all the examples I will share with you, as you heard already from Marta, will be from our ongoing PBL lab research and development focused on collaboration technologies, interactive workspaces and places, and new emergent work practices and processes, as well as our architecture, engineering, and construction global teamwork education program that I've been teaching for two decades. So uh, as uh, we live, move, and interact in the 3D world, we understand the 3D world. Actually, architects, engineers, and builders think in 3D, and they create in 3D. For centuries, they have used 3D physical models to actually communicate the design intent to the client. However, very quickly, drafting efficiency technologies and methods have flattened these 3D models to 2D abstraction and uh, representations in the form of documents, very often paper documents. And then came the computer-aided technology that allowed us as a team, as clients, to view these 3D models on a 2D flat screen and integrate these discipline models to very quickly identify clashes across discipline models in order to save time and money. So um, for the past two decades, we have been also exploring interactive and immersive technologies that really allow us to understand what the future holds for the design and construction industry, as well as other vertical markets where there is a physical product. For instance, our mixed media, mixed reality uh, collaboration environment that links an interactive physical room with touch displays all around you with a virtual collaboration space to really allow the team and the clients to understand correlations, compare alternatives, and make decisions rapidly. And so as every global team has 
given a collaborative virtual world. They get together, it is a space that they co-create and they move the dial from viewing to experiencing and engaging in their virtual buildings before ground is broken. So they can rapidly troubleshoot often and early and make decisions and reduce coordination overhead. So let me give you uh, one of the stories of a typical team and one of the students. Oops. I'm an undergraduate at Stanford University. In 2011, I was an apprentice in Island team, one of the six global student teams in the AEC Global Team of Project-Based Course, offered at Stanford with partners worldwide. Our challenge was to design a 30,000 square foot university building in the University of Puerto Rico while being remotely located around the globe, and our team won the Swinnerton Native Challenge for our design. I think the first key to our success as Island team was that we were excellent at communication. If language and culture are barriers, then you need to find something that transcends these barriers. And for us, it was humor. In one of our very first brainstorming sessions, Frank, our life cycle financial manager from Germany, said that he wanted a bar in the building. And I think the first thing I asked was, how many square feet would that be? We ended up putting a cafe in the final design, and a lot of thought went into how that would activate the social space, improve circulation, and even turn up a small profit. In other words, we took ownership of our work, and we made it fun. For the final presentation, Frank even brought us his favorite beers from Germany, and Rebecca, our architect, brought her family's native coffee from Puerto Rico. We weren't afraid of using technology to improve our communication even more. We used an online 3D immersive collaboration environment for our weekly meetings and dramatically increased our productivity because we could engage with each other as if we were meeting in person. Later, we imported our models into the same virtual space, and instead of just looking at drawings, we could experience our building from the inside out. We even brought our owners into the space on a regular basis and allowed them to engage in the design process. In this online virtual environment, we learned to develop work practices and communication protocols that were unique and worked for us. When we ran our weekly meetings, we didn't waste time doing show and tell. We immediately identified problems and split into subgroups to solve them. At the end of the hour, we drew up an action list and scheduled additional subgroup meetings throughout the week. We kept all our work transparent through file sharing. This collaboration space also offers a social construct. As we move into mobile knowledge work, we are losing all this physical interaction. So the collaboration space allows the participants to move from a project group to a cohesive team building identity and trust. So here is the story of another team with the architect in Puerto Rico, engineer at Stanford, and construction manager in Sweden. This is their collaboration space. The lights are turned off. Everybody comes in. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gabby. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Woo! This has been the best surprise ever. <laughs> I can't believe you can actually put a cake on. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a virtual cake we got here. No, that's beautiful. I mean... <laughs> I hope you like virtual chocolate. So another immersive technology that is a remote robotic uh, manipulation where you see these uh, little robots uh, allow people to have a physical presence remotely. And these are instances from the global teamwork. Uh, both in client interaction as well as subgroup meetings, as well as socializing constructs. Uh, but fast forward, you already heard from my colleague um, Jeremy, uh, virtual reality is coming to you very soon. 
And uh, you can see our demos where the buildings that these students design and model virtually are brought in to uh, allow them to absolutely immerse and walk through these buildings and nothing else exists. Fast forward, uh, we uh, very soon will have a mixed reality technology coming from uh, Microsoft uh, HoloLens. And uh, this is uh, a demo example provided by Trimble uh, that is a software and hardware uh, uh, offering in the design and construction industry that allows the client and the team members to overlay, to project the holographic view of the building model on top of physical, partially constructed buildings and solve problems in real time. So very quickly, let's revisit our objectives, metrics, and outcomes. Because we are studying the impact of these technologies on behavior, on team process, and team dynamics. And so we start to measure and see zero rework, sprints within sprints, and moving the dial from uh, decisions made within many weeks to days and hours, as well as increased engagement, team dynamics, team identity, agility, and collaboration. We instrument all these global learners with biometric and physiological sensors to really gain an insight on the degree of engagement and participation and develop recommendations for the next generation immersive collaboration and learning spaces. So to give you a quick additional immersive uh, technology and space example, this is our Stanford Hive, where our team is really visualizing and analyzing this rich big data. Thank you so much, and I would also like to acknowledge our uh, fantastic sponsors, National Science Foundation, TechS in Finland, MediaX, Konica Minolta, and SMART. Thank you.